Here at Learn Electrics, we've had several questions about bathroom fans and we hope that this short video will help. Frequent questions will include things like how do I connect a bathroom fan into the bathroom lighting circuit? Or what connections do I make at the fan isolator switch? And why are there two lives? Always check that the lighting circuit is working normally before making any modifications. You need to know that you are starting from a good circuit, so let's remind ourselves of the basic lighting circuit. This is the basic one-way lighting circuit as you would expect in a bathroom. Notice that in all our drawings we've left the earth or CPC connections off the drawings just for clarity, to make it easier to follow what is happening. In real life, please make sure that the CPCs are properly connected. Some lighting circuits will have a loop to the next room connected at the ceiling rows. Now we can look at adding the fan to the circuit. We're happy that all is good with the existing lighting circuit, so let's choose a position for the fan and isolator switch. On this drawing, I've greyed out the existing wiring so that you can better see the new wiring that we add. There are two lives or phases to connect. The permanent live is taken from the live loop in the ceiling rows through the switch and into the first of the live terminals on the fan, marked here as L1. The switch live comes from the ceiling rows, through the switch and into the second live terminal on the fan, marked L2 on this drawing. Then the neutral from the ceiling rows, through the switch and into the N on the fan. And finally, make the necessary CPC or earth terminations. Correctly connected, when the lamp is on, the fan will be on. If we turn the lamp off, the voltage on the switch live will drop to zero. Shown here by changing the L2 cable from solid brown to a dotted line, indicating no voltage. The fan will now continue to operate until the timer reaches its preset time and it too turns off. How do we go about setting the timer? Every fan manufacturer will have a slightly different method of achieving the timer settings. Generally, the overrun times will be something like 5, 10 and 15 minutes or some other sequence of time. Some timers will also allow a zero time setting so that the fan exactly matches the light. Light on, fan on. Light off, fan off. These settings can be a simple three position switch or three pins in a shorting link or a digital switch setting. The timers with the removable links will use the different pin positions to select different delay times and we will use this type to demonstrate the timing principle. We we'll just reposition the link to select a different time. As shown, we can choose an overrun of 5 minutes or 10 minutes with these positions. And removing the link altogether will give a 15 minute delay. If this was the case on site, I would put the link onto just one pin so that the link is saved for future use. I've found from experience that if it's not kept in the fan, then it will nearly always be lost when you need it. Let's have a very simple, very basic explanation of how the timer works. In this scenario, the bathroom light is on. The permanent live is permanently energised and the switched live is also energised because the light is on. The 230 volts at the switched live passes through a voltage regulator and comes out as typically 12 volts DC. This 12 volts pulls in the relay and allows 230 volts, in this case, to pass through the relay and make the fan turn. Whilst the light is on, there will always be 230 volts on the switch live, which means that there will always be 12 volts to keep the relay in the on position. If the light is turned off, the switch live drops to zero volts, but the 12 volts does not drop to zero straight away. The capacitor has stored some electrical charge and this slowly seeps away depending on which resistor the links or switch have been set to. As the electrical charge drains out through the resistor, the voltage will slowly fall from 12 volts to 11 volts to 10 volts and so on. The relay will hold itself in the on position if the voltage is above say 4 volts and the fan will stay on. In this drawing, the 12 volts has dropped to less than 4 volts. 
This is not enough to hold the relay in the on position and so the relay drops out and the contacts open. When the contacts open, the permanent live is interrupted. No voltage can get to the fan and the fan stops. How do the links affect the timing? In this example, the link is across B and C, the 20 megaohm resistor. The link is shorting it out, so only the 10 megaohm resistor will have any effect on the timing. If the link had been across A and B instead, shorting out the 10 megaohm resistor, the timing would have been controlled by the 20 megaohm resistor. 20 megaohm is twice the value of 10 megaohm, so the timing period would be twice the value too. And with no links in position, the 10 megaohm and 20 megaohm resistors are both in circuit, in series with each other. 10 plus 20 is 30 megaohm, giving the longest possible overrun delay for this example. And that is a brief introduction to bathroom fans. In summary then, always make sure that the lighting circuit is functioning correctly before making any modifications. And do remember safe isolation. Then choose a location for the fan and three pole fan isolator switch. Now make the connections. Ceiling rows permanent live to L1 on the switch, then to L1 on the fan. Ceiling rows switch live to L2 on the switch and then to L2 on the fan. And ceiling rows neutral to N on the switch, sometimes labelled L3, and then to N on the fan. Remember to install the circuit protective conductors, the earths. Some switches and fans are labelled L1, L2 and N, and some are labelled L, L1 and N, depending on the manufacturer. And this little table shows this. Thank you for watching, it's very much appreciated. Hopefully, you've added a little more knowledge and understanding to your mental toolbox. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on Notify to be sure of not missing the next one. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.